uh, gone through all the videos, okay, uh, for for chapter four, okay. So, subtopic four point five, which is cofactors, okay. So, in order for enzyme to work, okay, to be in uh in active states, okay, in order for the enzyme to catalyze the chemical reactions, enzyme will require uh, cofactors, okay. So what are cofactors? They are non-protein uh, portion, okay, that are added to the uh, enzyme and they are, and they usually are found uh, binding to the enzyme uh, in the active site of the enzyme. They are found binding to the active site of enzyme, okay. So without Without uh, an, uh, a cofactor, so the enzyme is known as apoenzyme, okay? So without cofactors, the enzyme is known as uh, apoenzyme and the enzyme is not active, okay? It is not active, inactive enzyme. <clears throat> so inactive enzyme are uh, apoenzyme without its cofactor uh, and if you add cofactor to the to the active side of the enzyme, so the, we call it as hollow enzyme. So it is active, active form of an enzyme. So when uh, when the cofactor binds to the active side, then only the enzyme is activated, and the substrate can enter into the active side to catalyze the reaction until it produces the products. Okay, so just remember these two uh, terms: uh, apo enzyme and hollow enzyme. Apo without cofactors, so it is inactive hollow enzyme with cofactors, so it is active, all right? So, uh, what are, what are cofactors? What is cofactor? So, it is a non-protein uh, non molecule or ions uh, which is needed for the proper functioning of uh, enzyme. So, it is, they are also known as enzyme helper, okay? They assist, they assist the enzyme uh, activity, okay? So, many enzymes require cofactors. So how does the enzyme, uh, the cofactor helps the enzyme or assist the enzyme? One is by activating the enzyme, uh, by altering the shape of the enzyme, or it also can participate in the chemical reactions. Okay, so for example, you can have ions. Okay, that uh, that can be the cofactors that are found in the active side of enzyme. So the uh, how does the cofactor involve uh, in the reaction? It can extract, for example, hydrogen ion from the substrate and then transfer to another uh, substrate until it forms the product, okay? Um, or it can also extract uh, electrons, okay? It can extract electrons from the substrate and causes the bond within the substrate to be weakened and, uh, and breaks the bond within the substrate until it forms a new bond. Okay, so cofactors may be bound uh, tightly to the enzyme as permanent residence or they may bind loosely and reversibly along uh, with the substrate. So, so the, the, the cofactor can permanently uh, reside or permanent, permanently binds to the active side of the enzyme or it can uh, loosely attach to the enzyme. So when it attaches loosely to the enzyme, they can detach, okay, from the enzyme. So if the cofactor binds to the, as long as you have cofactor binds to the enzyme, the enzyme is active, okay. But if the uh, cofactor is detached from the enzyme, the enzyme can be in uh, inactive form. It is not activated, okay, to catalyze the reaction. So this is how the cofactor works, lah. Okay, so they, they will assist the enzyme activity, it helps the enzyme action, okay? So you can have two types of cofactors uh, based on what it is made up of, okay? So it can be organic or inorganic, okay? So organic, for example, you can have coenzymes, okay? So these are examples of coenzyme. You can have NADP, uh, sorry, NAD+, plus, NADP+, plus, ATP, and also coenzyme A. Okay, so how does the co coenzyme works? Okay, so the coenzyme can uh, help in the transfer of a certain chemical group. Okay, or it can help in the transfer of atoms from one substrate to to another uh, molecule. Okay, or it can extract electrons. Okay, so that is how a coenzyme works. So, for example, you can have here an AD plus uh, nicotinamide. 
I, I don't remember, okay, the 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 uh, long term, okay, but it is a cofactor that are found in enzyme that is involved in one of the step uh, in cellular respiration. Okay, so this is one of the step that involved in uh, in one of the step of cellular respiration, if uh, I'm not mistaken. Okay, and AD. Uh, NAD plus, okay, so a coenzyme for a number of dehydrogenase enzymes and acts as a hydrogen acceptor. So this is the enzyme, hydrogen, uh, sorry, um, malate dehydrogenase, okay, malate dehydrogenase. So as you can see from the name of this enzyme, dehydrogenase, it means that the function of this enzyme is to extract hydrogen from the substrate. Okay, so this is the substrate which is malate. So uh, uh, as you can see in the structure of malate, it has it has two hydrogen atoms. Okay, so with the help of this cofactor, which is uh, NAD plus, which is a type of coenzyme, so the NADP sorry the NAD plus will extract or it uh, takes away the hydrogen atoms. Okay, from the malate. So. Uh, it, it takes away two hydrogen atoms. So one of the hydrogen atom is added to itself. So it becomes NADH and then another hydrogen atoms, it becomes hydrogen ion which are released into the surrounding uh, aqueous solution, okay, in, into, the, into the cell. Lah. So, so, that, uh, so the, the, the malate then will be converted into the product which is oxaloacetate. So both of this malate and oxaloacetate is a four carbon compound. Okay, it, it is a four carbon compound. Okay, so that is a function of uh, of this NAD plus. It is it function as a cofactor, which is uh, a coenzyme. Uh, the, the it is specifically a coenzyme, which are found in this enzyme dehydrogenase, which function to extract hydrogen ion from the substrate. Okay. So until it becomes oxaloacetate. And then uh, this one, it has similar function, NAD plus, okay. It is also to take away hydrogen atom from a substrate until the substrate produces the product. But this one involved in one of the step of uh, in cellular respiration. But this one, it involves in photosynthesis, okay. It involves in photosynthesis. And then uh, as uh, the other one, the other types of cofactor, it is uh, made up of ions. So they are known as metal ion or inorganic. They are inorganic. Okay, it means that for organic, it has hydrogen atoms and uh, in the molecule, for example, or carbon. Okay, but this one is inorganic. So they are in the form of ions or metal ions. So example, you can have uh, calcium ion, zinc, magnesium, ferrum, chloride, and also cu uh, cuprum. Okay. So what is the function of these ions uh, as cofactor uh, in uh, in the enzyme is that it can help draw draw or pull, pulls away electrons from the substrate. So when uh, when the electron is pulled away from the substrate, the electrons uh, maybe uh, it was before forms the bond. Okay, it was uh, in the form of bonds uh, in the substrate molecule. But when the ion pulls away the electrons, it can cause the bond within the substrate to become less stable and also it can cause the bond to be broken and uh, leads to the formation of for uh, of new bonds okay so that is how the ion works okay it pulls away electron from the substrate and causes the bond within the substrate to be broken okay so you can uh, you can have calcium ion okay so cal calcium ions are needed to activate thrombokinase which is converted into prothrombin to thrombin in blood clotting okay so calcium ion uh, is needed in the blood clotting mechanism okay to uh, to activate uh, or to uh, convert thrombokinase to uh, thrombin and then sorry uh, prothrombin and then to thrombin and then for the chloride ion it is to increase uh, the activity of uh, the enzyme uh, amylase salivary amylase okay uh, so in order for the amylase to work it needs chloride ion so that is uh, uh, on cofactors and then uh, the next one, the next subtopic is 4.6, which is enzyme inhibitions. So you have to know what is uh, inhibitors, okay? So inhibitors are molecules or chemical molecules that inhibit, okay, and uh, the action of enzyme, 
So uh, as you know, the, the enzyme action is really specific. It means that it can only catalyze specific uh, reactions. Okay, it binds to specific uh, substrate. So it, in this case, to inhibit the enzyme, they also need or require specific inhibitors. Okay, specific inhibitors uh, will uh, inhibit the action of certain enzymes. Okay. And then, uh, okay, so you can classify the inhibitors into two types, which is reversible inhibitors or irreversible inhibitors. Okay, so the, uh, how do, why do you classify these uh, uh, inhibitors into these two groups, reversible and also irreversible? It is based on how the inhibitors binds, okay, to the uh, to the enzyme. Okay, how how is the interaction between the inhibitors and the enzyme. So for reversible inhibitors, uh, they will form weak bonds, okay, such as hydrogen bonds with the enzyme. So because they form weak bonds, okay, so this bond can easily be broken, okay. So as long as you have the inhibitors binds to the enzyme, the enzyme will not function. But if the bonds are broken, so it can cause the inhibitor to be released from the enzyme and once the enzyme is released, the enzyme can function again, okay, can function again. So that's why it says here, enzyme revert to the, to its functional structure. So when inhibitor binds to the enzyme, the enzyme cannot function, the enzyme cannot catalyze the reaction. But this type of enzyme can be removed, okay, it can be removed from the enzyme due to the weak interaction, okay. So uh, for reversible inhibitors, you uh, you have uh, there are two types, which is competitive inhibitor. Uh, sorry, competitive inhibitors and also non-competitive inhibitors. Okay, so uh, this one, these two types of inhibitors, is based on where they where where they uh, binds to the enzyme, where they will bind to the enzyme. For the competitive inhibitor, they will bind to the active site of the enzyme. For the non-competitive inhibitors, they will bind to the to a site we call it uh, we call it as allostric site. Okay, allostric site of the enzyme. So why do we call it as competitive inhibitors and non-competitive? For competitive inhibitors, because it binds to the active site of the enzyme, it will compete okay with the substrate to bind to the active site. But as for this one, non-competitive inhibitors, the the inhibitors will straight bind to the allostric site. And it does not care about the active site at all, okay? So that's that's why we call it as uh, the non-competitive inhibitors. So as the result of binding uh, 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 of binding the non-competitive inhibitors to the allostric site, it cause it will cause the enzyme to change shape, okay? Once the enzyme enzyme changes shape, it causes the active site to also change shape, and once the uh, active site changes shape, substrate. Okay, substrate cannot bind to the active site. So the, the enzyme cannot catalyze the reaction. So, but uh, for the second type of inhibitors here, you have the irreversible inhibitors. So for this one, because it is called as irreversible inhibitors, it means that the, the inhibitors will bind tightly and permanently to the enzyme. So once the inhibitor binds to the enzyme, they will bind permanently to the enzyme and causes the enzyme to cannot function anymore. So it destroys the enzyme function. So uh, the interaction between the inhibitors and the enzyme is through the formation of covalent bonds. Okay, covalent bonds are strong bonds. Okay, so strong bonds are formed between the inhibitors and also the uh, enzymes. Okay, so enzyme will not function anymore once you have irreversible inhibitors bind to the enzyme. Okay, so uh, reversible inhibitors, as I've mentioned, so you have two types, which is competitive and non-competitive inhibitors. So for this enzyme, sorry, for these inhibitors, they will form uh, weak bonds, okay, weak bonds that are easily broken. So example, you can have hydrogen bonds, okay, uh, that are formed between the inhibitors and the enzyme. So the inhibition only takes place while uh, the inhibitor is attached to the enzyme. So this weak bond can easily be broken. So this is the enzyme. Okay, so enzyme, it has the active site. Okay, so this is the where the substrate will bind to. 
And then you have another site here, which is we call it as the allostric site. The allostric site uh, uh, will not bind to the substrate. It only binds to two types of molecule. We call it as regulatory molecules. Okay, so you can have inhibitors or activators that can bind to the allostric site. So for this one, you, uh, when you have the competitive inhibitors, so for this inhibitor, it will compete with the substrate to bind to the active site. So if you have uh, the inhibitor already bi uh, bind to the active site, so substrate cannot enter. And so therefore, the enzyme cannot catalyze the reactions, okay? But as for the non-competitive uh, inhibitions, okay, so you have the non-competitive inhibitors that will bind to the allostric site of the enzyme. So as you can see from this diagram, okay, so once the non-competitive inhibitor binds to the enzyme, it causes the enzyme to change shape, okay? So once the enzyme changes shapes, the active site also changes shape. So when, when the active site changes shape, substrate cannot fit into the active site and so therefore the enzyme cannot catalyze the reaction okay so this is the detailed uh, explanation which is for this uh, for the non competitive inhibitors uh, the 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 sub, the inhibitors okay the inhibitors will have similar similar shape to the natural substrate similar shape okay not not the same but similar lebih kurang sama okay so uh, because they have similar shape, so the inhibitor will compete uh, with the substrate to bind to the, to the same active site. So uh, once the inhibitor binds to the active site, it will slow the rate of reaction, okay, slow down the rate of reaction and produce less products. Okay, so but you can overcome, you can overcome the effects of uh, non-competitive inhibition by increasing okay increasing the substrate concentration if you keep on adding substrate concentration to the reaction where uh, the reaction uh, you have inhibitor present in the reaction so once you uh, keep on adding the substrate you have more substrate molecule in the reactions so you have higher chance okay the enzyme will have higher chance to bind to the to the substrate instead of binding to the inhibitors okay so that that's how you overcome competitive inhibitions by increasing the substrate concentration the more that you add substrate the higher chance the substrate uh, collide okay with the enzyme and binds to the enzyme and the enzyme can can catalyze the reaction to produce the the products okay so example uh, Okay, so example for competitive inhibitors, uh, you can have this uh, reaction, okay, where you have the enzyme succinate, uh, succinate dehydrogenase, okay, succinate dehydrogenase and the substrate is succinate, okay, so succinate can bind can bind to the active site of the enzyme and catalyze the reaction to produce the uh, product which is fumarate okay so but in the presence of uh, the inhibitors so inhibitor in this case is ma uh, malonate okay so malonate as you can see the structure of malonate is similar to succinate so because they have similar structure so the malonate will bind to the active site of the enzyme and prevents the succinate from binding to the active site and so therefore there's uh, the the enzyme cannot catalyze the reaction and no product is formed okay or will be formed so that is an uh, easy example okay so just remember why do we call it as competitive inhibitors because the inhibitor will compete with the substrate to bind to the active site because they have similar structure okay so how to overcome you have to increase the substrate concentration why? Because the more the, the more that you add the substrate, the higher the chance the substrate binds to the active site instead of the inhibitor binds to the active site. So the next one is you have the non-competitive inhibitors for the reversible inhibitors. 
So uh, for the non-competitive inhibitors, they have no structural similarity okay, with the substrate. The structure of the substrate and the inhibitor are totally different. All right. So, uh, so the inhibitor will not bind to the active site, but it will bind to the allostric site. Okay. So the inhibitor will not compete with the substrate to bind to the, uh, uh, to the active site. It binds to the allostric site. So what is the effect of uh, the binding of the inhibitors? It will cause the enzyme to change shape, okay? change shape, change in the conformation of the enzyme. And when uh, the enzyme uh, changes shape, so obviously it affects the shape of the active site. So the active site also changes shape. And so when the active site uh, changes shape, so it, this will prevent the substrate from binding to the active site. And so therefore, no reaction can occur. Okay, so enzyme not functioning uh, temporarily and slow down the rate of reaction and produce less products. Okay, so for this type of inhibition, you cannot overcome by adding more substrate. Okay, so it, it will not work. Okay, so this graph, okay, it shows you the different type of reaction. Uh, for the for the enzyme reaction, okay. So the y axis it shows you the rate of reaction. So the x axis is substrate concentration. So you add more substrate to the reaction. So the green graph here it shows you the normal reaction, a okay, normal reaction without the presence of any inhibitors. So as you can see, the rate of reaction occurs really fast, okay, and reaches the uh, maximum velocity really quickly, okay. But if you add to the reaction uh, competitive inhibitors, as you can see, the, the rate of reaction will start to slow down, okay, but as you add substrate concentration, okay, uh, as you add more substrate uh, to the reaction, the, somehow the, the, uh, the reaction will complete, okay, will be completed, okay, or, or it reaches uh, maximum velocity, the same as uh, the reaction without the inhibitor, okay, but, but the reaction occurs much slower. Okay, so in order to, to overcome the effect is that you add more substrate to the reaction. The red graph here, it shows you for the reaction with the presence of non-competitive inhibitors. Okay, so, so when you add non-competitive uh, inhibitor to the reaction, as you can see, uh, the, the reaction will, will stop quickly or reaches Vmax quickly. Okay, maximum velocity really quickly and produces less products. As you can see, they, they, the reaction produces less products uh, and then you cannot overcome by increasing the substrate concentration. Okay, you cannot overcome non-competitive inhibition by increasing substrate concentration. Because why? Because the inhibitor will just bind to the uh, allostric site and causes the enzyme to change shape. Okay, and cannot uh, catalyze the reaction. Okay, so so the next one the, uh, is irreversible inhibitors. Okay, irreversible or uh, inhibitors or non-reversible inhibitors. So uh, this type of inhibitor will bind tightly and permanently to the enzyme. Okay, so they bind tightly through the formation of really strong covalent covalent bonds. Okay, so when uh, when you have strong interaction between inhibitors and the enzyme. So it means that the enzyme will always bind to the inhibitors and so therefore it destroys the enzyme function. The enzyme cannot, uh, cannot catalyze the reaction anymore. Okay? The enzyme loses its function. So this can occur at low inhibitors concentration. So, so uh, once you added this type of inhibitor to the to the enzyme, so the enzyme will totally uh, loses its function and rate of reaction slows down and also can lead to uh, uh, no reaction uh, will occur, okay, and no product will, will be produced. So example of irreversible inhibitors, you can have toxin and poisons, okay. Toxin and poisons, it will destroy the enzyme function, okay, it will destroy the enzyme function. So example here, you can have serine, okay, serine, which is a type of nerve gas. So they have no odor, no, uh, no tastes, and uh, they, will, they will target the, uh, the nervous system, okay, the, the transmission of impulse, okay, they will 
target the transmission of impulse from neuron to neuron. So how does the serine work? Okay, so they will bind uh, covalently to the R group. Okay, on the amino acid serine. So that's why we call it as serine. Okay, so because in uh, it involves this enzyme, acetylcholinesterase. Okay, acetylcholinesterase, which is an enzyme. Obviously, enzyme they have active site, right? Okay, so in the active site of the enzyme, the, uh, there is an amino acid. We call it as serine. Okay, so this toxin. Okay, will bind to the R group of the amino acid serine and causes the shape of the enzyme to be altered. Okay, altered. It alters the shape of the enzyme. So, the enzyme cannot bind and break down its substrate, which is acetylcholine. So, the initial substrate of this enzyme is this one, acetylcholine, which is a type of neurotransmitter. Okay, so the function... You have to know first, what is the function of this acetylcholine, which is a, a type of neurotransmitter. Acetylcholine, it will allow, okay, the, the neuron to transmit impulse from one neuron to another neuron to another neuron and reaches its target uh, cell, which is muscle, okay, muscle cell. So once, once impulse reaches the muscle cell, it causes the muscle to contract, okay. But uh, when you have serine, okay, you have serine. Um, the transmission of impulse will occur continuously without stop and causes the the muscle to contract continuously, and cause uh, and and can lead to muscle uh, uh, spasm, kejang, okay, lead to convulsion, paralysis, and eventually death. So, upper impulse, the nerve impulse cannot be stopped, causing continuous contraction. So, this is the the function of this um, of this uh, enzyme acetylcholinesterase. It is to break down acetylcholine. It is to break down acetylcholine. So, you need to break down the acetylcholine so to prevent acetylcholine to accumulate uh, at the synaptic uh, cleft. So, kalau saya boleh draw kat sini sebenarnya dia macam ni. Okay, so this is one neuron. Okay, one uh, one neuron. Neuron, and then this is the dendrite. Okay, so this is another neuron. Sorry lah, neuron saya tak apa nak cantik eh. So saya draw dengan mouse. Okay, so ruang kat dalam ni, ruang sini kita namakan ni sebagai synaptic cleft. Okay, so impulse is transmitted along the axon okay and uh, and then transmitted to the next neuron here in order to allow the impulse to be transmitted from neuron 1 to neuron 2 okay this first neuron has to release acetylcholine okay into the synaptic cleft so it releases acetylcholine so the function of this acetylcholine is that it will bind to the uh, dendrite of this second neuron okay so once uh, acetylcholine binds to the dendrite of the second neuron it causes the impulse can to be able to be generated in the next in the next neuron until it reaches a muscle cell okay and causes the muscle cell to contract okay tapi awak tak nak impulse tu selalu uh, ditransmit kan dan menyebabkan muscle tu selalu contract so in order to prevent a uh, continuous uh, transmission of impulse you need this enzyme okay acetylcholinesterase it is to break down the neurotransmitter and to stop the transmission of impulse okay and prevent the muscle from always contracting itu yang di dimasukkan dengan enz, uh, apa serine is serine okay will become the inhibitor for acetylcholinesterase and prevent the acetylcholinesterase to not be able to break down acetylcholine and causes the acetylcholine to accumulate in the synaptic cleft. Okay, itu, itu kesan serin ni. Accumulation of acetylcholine in the synaptic cleft. Okay, so the nerve impulse cannot be stopped causing continuous contraction that leads to convulsion, paralysis and also eventually death. Okay. 
Faham tak yang tadi? Faham ke macam mana serin berfungsi? Apa ke serin sebagai irreversible inhibitors? Ada Okay, faham ya? So kalau tak, tak ada soalan Saya proceed eh Okay madam Okay Okay so the next one is uh, subtopic 4.7 Okay which is regulation of enzyme activity When reaction occurs and at what rate Okay so basically all living cells will have um, biochemical reaction or metabolic pathway to occur inside cell. So in order for the cell to carry out its function. Okay, semua cell yang hidup mesti ada enzyme supaya dia boleh catalyze uh, biochemical reaction yang berlaku dalam cell ataupun metabolic pathway yang berlaku dalam cell. Setiap cell dia mempunyai apa fungsi yang berbeza kan. So every cell will have uh, their own function So they have their own specific enzyme And uh, each enzyme will have specific regulation uh, Of how to control the enzyme activity Okay, so So the first one here, uh, it says uh, Genes, okay, that codes for enzyme may be turned on or off Okay, such as for example, you can have gene that codes for the enzyme Beta galactosidase is activated when lactose is present. So in this case, the punya statement maksudnya kat sini. Okay, so this one, uh, this enzyme beta galactosidase uh, is to break down lactose. Okay, so as you know, lactose is a uh, is uh, a disaccharide. Okay, which is the monom the monomer is uh, glucose and galactose. Okay, so this gene, this gene, okay, produces the enzyme beta galactosidase only when lactose is present. So that means that the gene is turned on. If there is no lactose, the gene is turned off and there is no production of beta galactosidase. Sebab apa? Sebab apa nak hasilkan beta galactosidase kalau tak ada lactose? Faham tak? Okay. So usually uh, this, uh, this enzyme is produced by a bacteria which is E. coli. Okay, so in the E. coli, it has uh, uh, a small, a small circular DNA, we call it as plasmid. Okay, a small circular DNA, we call it as plasmid. So in this plasmid, it has the gene to synthesize the enzyme beta galactosidase only when the outside surrounding you have lactose. Okay, lactose. Okay, so in the, uh, when, when the outside surround, surrounding, you have lactose, so the bacteria can take up the lactose, okay, take up the lactose and uh, the lactose is now inside the E. coli. So in the presence of lactose, the, the gene will be activated or turned on to produce beta galactosidase to break down lactose into uh, glucose and also galactose. Okay, galactose. So these are simple sugars. Okay, simple sugars that the bacteria can use to carry out cellular respiration, uh, which is to fuel cellular respiration to generate energy in the form of ATP. Okay, so so the bacteria can only carry out cellular respiration if the lactose is broken down into its monomer. Okay, so that is uh, turn on or off. Okay, the gene that is in, uh, that is used to synthesize the enzyme is either turned on or off. On, the gene can synthesize the enzyme. Off, the gene cannot synthesize the enzyme. Okay. So the second uh, example, here, here you have the uh, inactive enzyme. So example of inactive enzyme, you can have pepsinogen. Okay. So pepsinogen are enzyme produced by uh, your stomach. Okay, your stomach, your stomach produces pepsinogen. But pe pepsinogen here is inactive. Okay, so in order to activate the enzyme, the stomach has to produce hydrochloric acids. Okay, 
if the stomach has to produce hydrochloric acids. So in order, uh, why why does the stomach produces hydrochloric acid? It is to activate activate pepsinogen so that it becomes the active form which is pepsin. Okay, the active form of pepsinogen is pepsin. Pepsin. Okay, so as you know, pepsin is the enzyme which is used to hydrolyze or break down protein, which is the food that you eat may contain protein, such as you eat meat or chicken or fish that contains protein. So this protein has to uh, has to be broken down by the enzyme pepsin. Okay, so pepsin is activated due to the activation of pepsinogen in the presence of hydrochloric acid. Okay, hydrochloric acid. So the next one is presence of inhibitors. Okay, yang macam kita tengok tadi lah. Such as for example, you can have reversible inhibition. Okay, uh, which is the enzyme will be inhibited in the presence of inhibitors. Okay, if uh, if enzyme binds to the, sorry, if inhibitor binds to the enzyme, the enzyme cannot catalyze the reaction. But if the inhibitors is detached, okay, from the enzyme, it is removed from the enzyme, the enzyme can function again, okay? So that is reversible inhibition. Ada inhibitors, enzyme tak boleh nak berfungsi. Bila inhibitors dah dikeluarkan daripada enzyme, reversible, baru enzyme tu boleh berfungsi, okay? So the next one, uh, number four, regulate, uh, regulatory molecule, okay? Regulator molecule, ataupun regulatory molecule, okay? So, you have two types of regulatory molecule. We call it as reg, uh, allosteric regulators. You can have uh, allosteric activator and the other one is allosteric inhibitors. Okay, so allosteric activator will activate enzyme. Allosteric inhibitors will inhibit enzyme. Okay, so these two, this allosteric uh, molecule or regulators, they will only bind to the allosteric site of the enzyme. Okay. And then the last one is end products may inhibit enzyme, which is, for example, you can have feedback inhibition. So feedback inhi uh, inhibition is a type of um, uh, enzyme uh, regulatory mechanism, okay? So uh, for this type of uh, feedback inhibitions, the end products, okay, the end product of the reaction of the enzyme will become the inhibitor for the enzyme that is used to synthesize the product, okay? So the end product will become the inhibitor for the very first enzyme involved in the reactions, okay? So ini kita akan tengok dengan lebih detail lah nanti, okay? Okay, so allosteric regulations, okay? So you, you have, you can have regulatory molecules, okay? So regulatory molecules can, uh, can be of two types, activator and also inhibitors. Okay, so this uh, regulatory molecule will bind uh, briefly and reversibly to another site. So another site is re referring to the allosteric site. Okay, uh, uh, and the binding of this regulatory molecule will cause the enzyme to change shape and change its function. Okay, so you can have uh, allosteric activation and allosteric inhibition. Allosteric in uh, activation, you have activators bind to the allosteric site, okay, and causes the enzyme to be activated, okay. For the allosteric inhibition, uh, so it is a form of non-competitive inhibition. Why? Because the inhibitors will straight bind to the allosteric site and causes the enzyme to change shape and substrate cannot bind to the active site, okay. So the enzyme is in the inactive form. Okay, inactivating, okay, cannot function in active form. In active form, okay. So here I, I've added uh, an extra slide just to explain to you uh, what is allosteric enzyme. So in order for you to understand allosteric regulation, you have to understand first what is allosteric enzyme, okay. So allosteric enzymes are enzyme that has two or more subunits. Okay, usually kalau yang biasa jumpa adalah satu enzyme, satu active site kan and then it binds to the substrate to catalyze reaction produces products. But for allosteric enzyme, they have more than, they have two or more subunits. Okay, more than one. 
Okay, more than one subunit. Okay, like this. Okay, so basically, uh, they have uh, more than uh, one subunit or two or more subunits, but they will bind to the same substrate. Okay, they will bind to the same substrate. Okay, so these are the substrate. The point where the the sub the subunit meets, okay, here, the point where the subunit meets, we call it as the allostric site. Okay, so this is where the regulatory molecule will bind to. Okay, so enzyme oscillates between active and inactive form. So this type of enzyme, okay, allostric enzyme, they are not stable. They are not stable. They will keep on changing shape from active form, inactive form. Active form, inactive form. This selalu berubah bentuk. Okay, so in order to stabilize allostric uh, enzyme, okay, you will need uh, this uh, allostric regulator to bind to the uh, allostric site. Okay, in order to stabilize the enzyme, either in the active form or in the inactive form, you will need the allostric regulators. Okay. So each subunit has its own active site and also allostric site. Active site is where substrate binds to. Allostric, uh, sorry, active site is where substrate binds to. Allostric site is where the regulatory molecule will bind to. Okay. So the regulatory the regulatory molecule can be activator or inhibitors. Okay, that binds to the allostric site. So allostric site is where uh, the subunit uh, meets. Okay, the joint or the location where the subunit will will meet okay so this will become the allostric site that uh, that is the site for the activator or inhibitor binds to so binding by regulatory molecules induces a change in the active uh, in the shape of the enzyme either okay in the active form or in the in uh, inactive form okay so kalau uh, activator binds it activate the enzyme if the inhibitor binds, it uh, uh, it, it, it inhibits the enzyme, okay? So it means that kalau activator binds, the, uh, the activator will stabilize, will stabilize the active form. If the inhibitor binds, it will stabilize the inactive form, okay? So itu fungsi dia. So for every uh, allostric enzyme, they will need only one activator on or only one inhibitor although they have uh, several okay several allostric site okay several allostric site here you only need one activator to bind to the to bind to one of the allostric site and causes all of the subunit to be in the active form okay to stabilize the active form you only need one activator to stabilize all the subunit of the enzyme in the active form. But uh, same goes to the inhibitor. You only need one activator to bind to one of the allostric site to cause all of the subunit to be or to be in the stabilized, uh, sorry, to be in the inactive form. It stabilizes the inactive form of the enzyme. Only one molecule is required, okay? to bind to the allostric site. So to stabilize. Kenapa dia guna perkataan stabilize ni? Sebab apa allostric enzyme ni dia akan sentiasa berubah bentuk. Dia, dia tak stable. Dia dalam keadaan yang tak stable. It always changes shape. Active not active. Active not active. So in order to um, optimize okay, the reaction, so you need the regulatory molecule. Okay. So that is uh, allostric uh, regulation okay that involves the regulatory molecule so the next one is cooperativity okay again it also involves allostric enzyme okay the, the enzyme that has uh, two or more subunits okay uh, so uh, for this type of cooperativity the substrate okay the substrate will become the activator okay the substrate will become the activator so you, so initially the enzyme Okay, this enzyme is the in uh, is in the inactive form. The okay, enzyme is in the inactive form. With the presence of the substrate, okay, on, you only require one molecule of substrate to bind to one of the active site. So when one of the substrate bind to one of the active site, it causes all of the active site to be in a stable 
uh, active form. Okay, it stabilizes the active form of all of the four subunit of the enzyme. So binding of one substrate molecule to active site of one subunit locks all subunit in the active form. That is cooperativity. Satu substrate hanya hanya satu substrate dia perlukan untuk bind to one of the active site and causes all subunit to be in the active form. Okay, it stabilizes the active form of all subunit of the enzyme. Okay. So that is cooperativity. They, they cooperate lah kan. Maksudnya substrate. You, you only want, need one substrate. Okay. So the next one uh, is feedback inhibitions. Okay. So for this one, activity of an enzyme near, okay, near the beginning of a metabolic pathway is inhibited by the end product. What is metabolic pathway? Metabolic pathway is the biochemical reaction that occurs within cells that involve many enzyme interaction. Okay, you have the initial substrate. Okay, so the initial substrate will bind to the first enzyme, produces uh, intermediate product. Intermediate product binds to the second enzyme, produces the next intermediate product, binds to the next enzyme. So metabolic pathway basically it involves the reaction that involves many enzymes. Okay. So you have the initial uh, substrate and the end products, okay. For feedback inhibition, so the end products, okay, the end products of the metabolic pathway will become the inhibitors for the, uh, for the, usually for the first enzyme, okay, or enzyme uh, that, uh, that involve um, early in the reaction, okay. Near the beginning of a metabolic pathway in, in is is inhibited by the end product. So we call it as allostrate, uh, it is an allostrate inhibition, okay. So example, you have accumulation of uh, isoleucine, okay. Isoleucine here is the end product. Isoleucine is the end products, okay. So the production, the production of isoleucine will, uh, will uh, increase and, uh, and causes the isoleucine to accumulate, okay. So once isoleucine binds to the uh, to the first enzyme, for example, okay, it causes the whole reaction to stop for a while, okay. So accumulation of isoleucine allostrically inhibit the enzyme in the first step of the pathway, okay. So what is the significance of feedback inhibition? It is to prevent the cell from wasting chemical resources to synthesize more isoleucine than is uh, necessary, okay. So, itu, itu kepentingan uh, feedback inhibition to prevent the cell from from wasting uh, chemical uh, chemical resources. Maksudnya bila cell tu dah cukup menghasilkan produk yang cell tu nak, dah lah kan? Maksudnya dah. Uh, guna dulu produk tu sampai habis baru uh, start uh, to synthesize more of the end product later. Okay. So, uh, for this one, um, okay. So here is uh, is uh, is a diagram to show you the metabolic pathway for the synthesis of isoleucine. Okay, isoleucine is the end product. So the initial substrate here is the threonine. Okay, threonine and isoleucine is a type of amino acid. Okay, which is uh, which is synthesized or this metabolic pathway can be found in E. coli. Okay, in E. coli, which is a type of bacteria. So this bacteria, E. coli, will use threonine, okay, as the initial substrate to synthesize isoleucine, which is another type of amino acid. So in the metabolic pathway, it uh, it in, uh, involves many enzymes. Enzyme 1, enzyme 2, 3, 4, 5, and you have many intermediate uh, products, okay. So the initial enzyme here is threonine deaminase, okay. So the substrate is Threonine. Okay, so uh, catalyzes the chemical reaction and produces the, uh, the end product which is isoleucine. So isoleucine here, the cell has produced too much. Okay, the cell produces too much isoleucine. Isoleucine accumulates. So the isoleucine will bind to the allostric site of the uh, enzyme threonine deaminase. Ingat ya, they bind to the allostric site of threonine deaminase and causes the enzyme to change shape and so when the enzyme changes shape, uh, threonine cannot bind. 
okay tyrosine can bind to the to the enzyme and and uh, it stops the reaction for a while okay it stops the reaction for a while so to let the cell to use the isoleucin first okay they guna dulu so once the isoleucin concentration uh, in the cell is reduced okay so then only isoleucin will detach okay and then uh, causes the enzyme to change back to its origin original shape and catalyzes the uh, the the synthesis of isoleucin again okay uh, so dia nak dia nak memastikan proses feedback inhibition ni dia nak memastikan sel tu menghasilkan produk pada sekadarnya uh, pada uh, pada kadar yang diperlukan oleh sel saja tak menghasilkan produk dengan terlebih banyak. Ha, macam tu kan. So bila dah cukup dia akan jadi inhibitors. Bagi sel tu guna dulu bila concentration of product tu reduce baru dia akan detach and enzyme tu boleh catalyze the the cycle again. Okay the cycle of reaction again. Okay so the next one uh, sebelum kita move to uh, chap, apa subtopic 4.8 which is classification of enzyme. Ada soalan? Faham eh? Okey lah. Tak ada soalan? Okay, so kalau tak ada saya proceed. Saya assume semua faham eh. Okay, so next one is uh, classification of enzyme 4.8. Okay. So enzyme are classified uh, based on the type of reaction they will catalyze. Okay. So uh, as, you, uh, as you know all enzyme, most enzyme, okay, most enzyme, uh, how do how do you identify that they are enzyme? So at the end of the enzyme, you have the the enzyme has the has ace okay, at the back of the name of the enzyme. Okay, suffix uh, suffix ace. Okay, maltase, sucrase, and all that lipase. Okay, so they have ace at the end of the name for that uh, enzyme. Okay, so uh, there are six uh, classes of enzyme. Okay, based on the type of uh, enzyme uh, reaction the enzyme catalyzes. So this classification is based on uh, recommendations of uh, nomenclature, nomenclature uh, committee of the International Union of Biochemistry and Molecular Biology in 1964. Okay. Okay. So you have six six different uh, classes of enzyme. So yang kat slide saya ni saya tambah untuk uh, sebagai contoh lah. Tapi dia dah lari dia punya alignment dia. Okay. Okay, so for each classes, I will give you an uh, example of reaction. Okay, so that it is easier for you to understand. Okay, so the first one is oxidoreductase. So for this class of enzyme, as you can see from the name, oxidoreductase. So it means that the, this class of enzyme involved in the oxidation reduction reaction or redox reaction. Okay. So you have to know the concept of redox reaction. It involves what? The transfer of electrons or hydrogen or, or oxygen from one molecule to another molecule. So that is oxidoreductase. This class of enzyme involved in oxidation reduction reaction or redox reaction. So you have here malate, uh, sorry, malate dehydrogenase. Okay. Macam saya bagi cakap, cakap tadi dehydrogenase it means that this enzyme remove hydrogen from the substrate and the and the hydrogen uh, is given will be given to this cofactor which is nad plus okay so nad plus will remove hydrogen ion to hydrogen ion or atom from malate okay uh, so nad plus will become nadh and another hydrogen ion is released Okay, to the surrounding, to the cell, uh, to the cell surrounding. 
into the cell uh, cytoplasm basically and then uh, uh, and then the malid will produce the product which is oxaloacetate okay so example you have here an ATH dehydrogenase okay and then the next one is transferase okay daripada nama tu awak boleh dah tahu dah apa jenis reaction yang dia buat okay transferase transfer a functional group okay transfer of functional groups okay so kita dah tengok awal-awal masa chapter 1 hari tu kita dah belajarkan pasal functional groups you have hydroxyl uh, hydroxy groups or amino groups okay so these functional groups are transferred from one substrate to another uh, molecule okay so example here you have hex hexokinase okay so hexokinase is an enzyme that will transfer one phosphate group okay from an ATP molecule okay hexokinase is an enzyme that will transfer one phosphate from ATP molecule ATP, ATP is adenosine triphosphate okay the hexokinase will remove one phosphate and it will give the phosphate to glucose okay so glucose will become glucose 6 phosphate and you uh, you have ADP produced okay ADP adenosine diphosphate sebab tadi awak dah ambil satu phosphate daripada ATP kan so dia jadilah ADP ATP jadi ADP Adenos adenosine triphosphate becomes adenosine diphosphate sebab satu phosphate dia dah bagi dekat glucose okay yang ini adalah one of the step that occurs in cellular respiration that we will look in chapter 5 Okay, next chapter ni. So, ini adalah tindak balas yang sangat familiar uh, yang awak akan sangat familiar bila kita masuk chapter 5 nanti. Sama juga dengan example yang pertama ni. Ini adalah sa salah satu tindak balas yang berlaku dalam cellular respiration. Okay. <coughs> yang ini dalam uh, stage ini dalam stage glycolysis. Ini dalam stage um, Krebs cycle, okay Krebs cycle. Cellular cellular respiration ada few, several steps. Kita ada glycolysis, kita ada link reaction, kita ada Krebs cycle, kita ada uh, electron transport chain. Uh, okay, so yang yang ni dalam glycolysis, ini dalam Krebs cycle. Okay. So the next one is hydrolase. Okay, daripada nama ni kan awak boleh dah tahu oh enzim ni buat apa. Okay, so hydrolase, hydro air, lase pecah. So enzim ni terlibat dalam pecahkan ikatan yang melibatkan air. Faham? Okay, catalyzes the hydrolysis of substrate by the addition of water. Hydrolysis, the reaction requires water and the reaction breaks bonds. Okay, it breaks bond with the addition of water molecule. So example you have sucrose uh, and water and the enzyme is sucrase. Okay, sucrose is a disaccharide which uh, the, the, the monomers are glucose and fructose. Okay, the, the monomers are glucose and fructose. So the, uh, the sucrase will break the bond uh, uh, in the glucose, sorry, in the sucrose molecule until it forms uh, glucose and fructose and the, the reaction requires water. Yang ini kan reaction ni awak kena tengok balik tindak balas untuk soalan chapter 1. Ha, kita nak test minggu depan kan? Okay. So uh, yang ini awak, this one you should be able to know how to draw the reaction. Okay. So you you should know uh, the structure of sucrose that it is composed of glucose and fructose and why in the reaction it requires water. Ha, ingat balik eh. So uh, the next one, uh, so example you have uh, dipeptidase, uh, other example you have lipase, amylase, sucrase and also peptidase, okay. And then the, uh, the fourth group is lice, okay, lice. So this one sama je, kan, but this, the, the enzyme lice, okay, it breaks bond but the reaction does not require uh, addition of water, okay, it breaks bond it uh, it causes the molecule to be broken into smaller molecule okay and then uh, the reaction will not require any water without the addition of water so removal or sorry formation or removal of a double bond uh, with group transfer okay so catalyzes the breaking of chemical bond without the addition of uh, water so example fermentation of sugar by yeast so 
you have uh, the substrate here is pyruvate. Okay, pyruvate, the enzyme is pyruvate decarboxylase. Tengok eh, nama dia decarboxylase. Maksudnya dalam, uh, untuk enzyme ni, dalam reaction yang dia akan catalyze, dia akan remove kan carbon dioxide. Okay, decarboxylase. So, uh, pyruvate, pyruvate is a three carbon uh, sugar. Okay, pyruvate is a three carbon sugar. So, uh, pyruvate decarboxylase will break down pyruvate into two molecule which is ethanol, a two carbon molecule and also carbon dioxide. Okay, two carbon and one. So, jadilah pyruvate yang asal ni tadi. Okay. So, other example you have uh, fumarase, PAP carboxylase. Uh, so, those are example of lice. Okay. So, the next one is isomerase. Okay. So, daripada nama, again, you should be able to know the function of the enzyme which is to catalyze the rearrangement of atoms within a molecule and convert one isomer to another. Okay. So, example, uh, one of the reaction involved in uh, cellular respiration. Okay. So, this is um, uh, a, ke uh, a chemical reaction that occurs in cellular respiration again which is in glycolysis. Okay. So, glucose, 6-phosphate and then you have the en uh, enzyme uh, phosphoglucoisomerase. Okay. Phosphoglucoisomerase, it changes glucose into fructose. Okay. Glucose and fructose are isomer of each other. Okay. So, the next one is ligase. Okay. So, ligase daripada perkataan ligate. Okay. So, what does ligate mean? To join two molecules together through the formation of bonds. Okay. So, joining of two molecules using energy derived from breakdown of ATP. So, basically, uh, in order for the enzyme ligase to work, it, it needs uh, energy from ATP. Okay. So, this one, this reaction is, uh, it shows you one of the steps in, uh, in protein synthesis. Okay. So, in order to synthesize uh, protein, okay. So, protein, the monomers are amino acids. Okay. The monomers of protein are amino acids. So, uh, in the synthesis of protein, you, you will need this RNA molecule which is tRNA. tRNA, transfer RNA. What, does the function, what is the function of tRNA? It is to bring specific amino acid to the ribosome to synthesize the protein. Okay. So, uh, in order for the tr tRNA to bring uh, amino acid to the ribosome, the tRNA, okay, you have to attach amino acid to the tRNA. So, in order to attach amino acid to the tRNA, obviously you have to form bonds, okay. You have to form bonds between the amino acid and the tRNA and the enzyme requires here is the amino acid tRNA synthetase. Synthetase, okay. Maksudnya dia mang, the enzyme tu digunakan untuk menghasilkan produk lah nanti, okay. Uh, which is amino acid, amino acid tRNA complex. So, the reaction requires ATP. And then uh, during the reaction, uh, uh, the ATP becomes AMP, adenosine monophosphate sebab dia release dua phosphate during the reaction. Okay, in organ, PI itu maksudnya inorganic phosphate. Okay. So, so maksudnya kat sini terhasil lah produk dia which is amino acid tRNA complex. Amino acid sekarang ni dah, dah, dah terlekat dekat tRNA. Okay, because you have ligated the amino acid with the RNA. You have, uh, you have formed bonds, okay, between amino acid and also the tRNA molecule. Okay, so next one. Uh, industrial and medical uses of enzyme, okay. So, these are applied uh, uh, situation. So, you have uh, this enzyme, protease, uh, uh, ligni ligninase, okay, in fungi, uh, glucose isomerase, like this, and also trypsin, okay. So, protease is the enzyme used in the baking industry. Uh, it's used to break down of proteins in, uh, in flour for biscuit uh, manu manufacture, okay. So, so this, um, apa nama, this enzyme will break down protein so that the, uh, apa, that the biscuit can be uh, apa, more, this selalunya untuk roti sebenarnya kan, so that the, the bread can be more fluffy yang macam tu lah, okay. 
And then uh, pepper industry, uh, lignin is remove, uh, removal of lignin from pulverized food. Okay, uh, untuk, untuk hasilkan uh, kertas daripada kayu. Okay. And then uh, processed food, glucose isomerase, manufacture of fructose syrup from glucose. Okay. So, macam saya cakap tadi lah, kan glucose dengan fructose adalah isomer. So, enzyme glucose uh, isomerase ni is to convert glucose into fructose to form fructose syrup. Okay, yang banyak ada dalam aitin awak tu, kan aitin semua tu ada fructose syrup. Okay. And then um, milk production. Okay, so you uh, uh, you have the enzyme lactase. Okay, production of lactose free milk. Ini untuk orang-orang yang allergic dengan lactose pada susu. Okay, so like this ni, the enzyme like this will break down lactose jadi dia punya monomer which is glucose and galactose. So sekarang ni susu tu hanya akan ada glucose and galactose je. Okay, glucose and galactose. So for lactose free milk ni dia akan jadi lebih manis. Okay, ha, macam tu. Sebab dia ada glucose and galactose sahaja. No, like, no lactose. Okay. And then uh, medical uh, trypsin, uh, removal of blood clots uh, and in wound cleaning. Okay. So the last subtopic which is 4.9 which is enzyme technology. So it says here enzymes can be extracted from cells uh, used to catalyze wide range of, wide range of commercially important processes. Macam tadi lah kan. You can have all this enzyme okay, used in the, uh, in the industry to achieve uh, its purpose, okay, in bulk quantity, in high quantity dan jumlah yang banyak, okay, new processes develop to manufacture bulk and high added value products, okay, dalam jumlah yang banyak and high added uh, values, macam tadilah, you want to produce um, apa, milk for those that are lactose intolerant, okay, so the, the milk produced will only uh, contain glucose and galactose. Okay, so uh, here you have uh, uh, a type of enzyme we call it as or a mechanism. Okay, we call it as immobilized enzyme. Okay, immobilized enzyme. So what is immobilized enzyme? These enzymes are attached to or retained within soluble or inert support. Maksudnya akan ada satu support kan satu support macam satu bahan okey untuk awak attachkan awak punya enzyme okey so maksudnya sekarang ni enzyme awak will not be able to move okey because the enzyme are attached to the support okey um, so what is the advantage of this immobilized enzyme so one the enzyme can be reused okey can be reused over and over again and you can have continuous production of the uh, of the product lah, okay. And then uh, enzyme do not contaminate products and generally more stable, okay. When you attached, when you attach uh, the the enzyme, okay, to the support, okay, uh, you you will add, okay, you will add the substrate into the attached enzyme, and then the substrate uh, will react with the enzyme, and then produces the product, and the product can be can can easily be uh, isolated from the enzyme. So maksudnya kat sini through the mechanism of immobilized enzyme you can you can easily separate the end product from the enzyme. Okay, awak tak ada pencampuran antara enzyme dengan produk nanti. Macam nanti susahlah nak hasilkan produk kan kalau enzyme tu boleh bergerak. So that's why you attached the enzyme to a support. Okay, so that you can easily isolate the product from the whole reaction. Okay. So generally more stable lah. Generally the enzyme will be more stable. Okay. And then this advantage is that um, uh, there is possible or partial loss of activity. Okay. And then change uh, the kinetic of enzyme. Okay. Change the kinetics of enzyme. Why? Because the enzyme now you have attached the enzyme to a support. So the enzyme will not move anymore. The only substance that will move is the substrate. Okay, the substrate will find the enzyme. Okay. 
Okay, so you have several methods of immobilized enzyme. So the first one is absorption. Okay, absorption. So you have the support here. Okay, so the, you will attach the enzyme to the support. Okay, through uh, weak bonds. Okay, you can have hydrogen bonds or Van der Waals uh, forces or hydrophobic interaction or ionic interactions. Okay, that are formed between the support and the enzyme. So the enzyme are attached to the support by weak interactions or weak bonds, okay? So enzyme physically absorb or attach to uh, onto support material, okay? So form between enzyme and uh, insoluble or inert support and then uh, support absorb, uh, absorber. So this, the component or the composition or the material for the absorber is can, it is, uh, can be made up of uh, ion exchange resin or hydrophobic resin. So this is the component, okay? of the support name. Ion exchange, uh, exchange resin or hydrophobic resin. So the next method of immobilized enzyme is uh, entrapment. Okay, entrapment. You trap enzyme into the support. Okay. So uh, trap enzyme uh, in a three-dimensional uh, lattice and then uh, enzymes are trapped in a support or inside of fibers which is lattice structure or in polymer membranes okay entrapment you trap the enzyme macam bekas lah dalam bekas kan ada banyak partition ah you you insert the enzyme okay so enzyme are not chemically bound okay so substrate and products can pass through the 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 support uh the other fibers okay but not the enzyme the the enzyme cannot pass through uh the support okay so enzyme are trapped within a confined space or network. So it's uh, the material for the uh, for the support here. Okay, the the blue uh, the the brown structure here it, it, it is made up of polymers such as arginate or silica gel. Okay, they macam bekas lah, bekas yang ada banyak partition yang awal letak enzyme tu. Okay, so enzyme terus lepas awal letak enzyme awal letak substrate. So reaction berlaku produces products, only the products can pass through uh, uh, the, the support uh, or the fiber bekas so, okay? Okay, so the next one is example is binding, okay? Binding or covalent bonding. Okay, kita tengok yang ni dulu lah, okay? Binding uh, and also the other one is encapsulation, okay? So binding you can have two types, covalent bonding and also cross-linking, okay? So covalent bonding macam ni. Dia macam sama juga macam absorption but the uh, but the interaction between the support and the enzyme is through the formation of covalent bond. Yang absorption ni is through the formation of weak bond. Ingat eh? Absorption, formation of uh, between the enzyme and the support is through weak bond. Covalent bonding is through covalent bond. Okay? So between enzyme, uh, enzyme and the support material, so the support is made up of cellulose or collagen and then uh, for the cross-linking so this is cross-linking okay you cross-link the enzyme together all right through, through the formation of bonds lah okay so enzyme are covalently bonded to each other so the support can be made up of a glutaral dehyde that acts as a protein cross-linking agent and then uh, and, uh, this one apa dia punya um, a disadvantage there, disadvantage of binding it is that it can cause the enzyme to be denatured, okay, due to the formation of bonds, okay. So that is that there's a disadvantage of binding. Enzyme can be denatured. And then for en encapsulation, so enzyme wrapped in semi-permeable membrane. So the membrane is composed of nylon or uh, cellulose nitrate, okay. Encapsulation, macam ni lah. So this is in encapsulation. So immobilized enzyme, you can have absorption, cross-linking, covalent bonding, entrapment or encapsulation. So upper advantage there, you can easily uh, isolate the products from the enzyme and the enzyme can be reused, okay, repeatedly over and over and over again, okay, without loss in the reaction. So uh, immobilized enzyme ni, sangat advantages sebab awak boleh um, apa biarkan reaction tu berlaku dalam kuantiti yang ba uh, banyak lah so that you produce much more products okay 
So example here, you have um, generation of lactose free milk using immobilized enzyme. Okay, which is now here you have yang yang apa the support system tu is the alginate beads. Okay, so you bind the the lactase which is the enzyme to the beads. Okay, so the 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 lactase is bounded to the beads and then you lalu kan dia you uh, the substrate the substrate is now is the lactase in the milk okay so once you you lalu kan uh, substrate dia kan so substrate akan akan react dengan enzyme dalam ni and then produces the products so the products can be isolated easily okay from the enzyme as the product will enter into this container Okay, so the product you produce is lactose free milk. Okay, so you have no lactose uh, left in the milk, only glucose and galactose. Okay, ni untuk orang-orang yang lactose uh, intolerant lah. So, awak kena make sure awak ni ta, uh, kalau orang-orang yang tak minum susu ni sama ada dia memang lactose intolerant ataupun memang dia tak suka minum susu. Tu dua benda yang berbeza eh. Sebab maybe due to the smell kan ataupun due to the taste. So orang yang tak minum susu ni belum tentu dia adalah lactose uh, intolerant. Uh, macam tu. Okay. Dia macam psikologi je dia tak suka minum susu. Dua benda yang berbeza. Okay habis habis uh, chapter empat. Sekarang tiga setengah. So ada soalan tak untuk chapter four ni? Tak ada soalan bagi tadi lagi. Oh bagusnya. Maksudnya semua orang faham lah ya. Okay, so kalau awak faham dan tak ada apa-apa soalan uh, boleh sign dan tanda sini. Okay. So saya open untuk uh, awak tanya soalan selain daripada chapter 4. 